Hey, this is Nutzer, and today we're going to be talking about equipping the rudder shift module on a battleship. This is a topic that I want to formalize. It's not something that's uh, groundbreaking, but I just wanted to have a discussion on the merits of this module over the other ones that could be equipped for battleships. The game in the background is myself in the Ismail. This is the Tier 6 Soviet battleship, and it's a really great game. We are actually bottom tier. It's a Tier 8 match, so good luck and enjoy that. The build is on the screen, though. Nothing really exotic as far as modules are concerned, save for the rudder shift mod. For my commander, priority target, expert marksman, superintendent, concealment, and fire prevention is the blueprint build for battleships to be tanks. I think battleship tanks are by far the strongest version of battleships in the game, and uh, you're going to see in this game just how strong it can be. Now, I know it isn't groundbreaking to have this conversation. I'm merely trying to document it for my YouTube channel so that when there is a viewer who has this question or would like more expertise on it, they can find this video and have a better direction to work from. That's all. I'm not trying to say that one is better than others, merely that one might be better for the play that you've chosen. And that's all. So, reduce flood and fire duration, damage control module. We've got the acceleration module and we have the rudder shift module. Now, the reduced flood and fire duration module is sort of the go-to pick. It helps against fires and floods that sit on your ship. And obviously, as a battleship, it's not a big deal. Not as big of a deal as it would be for a cruiser or a DD. Obviously, DDs, damage is damage. Uh, every second that it's ticking, the damage is doing damage, and you can't recover it. Unless you're some weird DD with a heal or something late tier Soviets or even a Gunther for the Germans. You're, this is going to be something that sticks on the ship. And it's the case for most cruisers until tier 9. Most cruisers and DDs have no interest in allowing any dot to stay on the ship for longer than it needs to. So you're aggressively using damage control in those instances. And for the last month or so, I have adopted this for my battleship play. I use damage control very aggressively when I feel like I will no longer have more sources of floods and fires that will be on the ship until the next cycle of damage control. And by putting the flood and fire out before it even has a chance to run its full course, I am completely negating the benefit of the duration improvement that that module might bring or the signal flag or whatever. So for me, it's like if I get improved damage control and I go that direction, it seems to be more beneficial than if I were to use the module itself, you know, as long as the duration and the premium attributes of that damage control and consumable are the best they possibly can be, then my battleship can honestly mitigate damage better by being aggressive. So that module playstyle just doesn't help me. And that's why I wanted to move away from it. The acceleration module, you know, would normally be seen as, you know, how could it be beneficial? Well, it is beneficial to sort of stationary battleship bow tankers. Looking at you, JB. These players want to play very slow and very tanky and very angled to the biggest threat possible. And as long as you operate plus or minus 11 knots or 12 knots, you will benefit from acceleration. And that can help throw off shots. It can help throw off torpedo strikes. It can help throw off anything. But you have to be under a certain threshold in speed. That's the biggest issue with it. Uh, in order to get there, you would have to scrub off so much that you basically are, are a sitting duck for follow-up shots. Just like that. Where I am not moving very fast and very easy for him to shoot at, but I don't really have that giddy up because I'm not using acceleration module to justify this type of play. It's not something that, like is going to ruin the game, because obviously I'm showing this game off, I'm not gonna die here, but it is something to consider in your play. So the rudder shift module, obviously it improves the speed that the rudder reacts to whatever command you give. And the faster the rudder reacts, the faster you reach half rudder or max rudder, and the faster your ship is going to be able to turn and maneuver. And there's a huge advantage to all of this. Having a faster rudder gives you better response against incoming torpedoes. Incoming aircraft who are trying to maneuver around your ship. Having a faster rudder is going to allow you to juke faster, maneuver to throw off incoming shells as well, and also it really helps in ram attempts. Having the superior rudder shift 
really helps you dictate the pace of a ram attempt and you can maneuver around whereas the other one is sort of stuck having to respond and hope that you make a mistake. Great example of this ram situation. I was in a Montana, opponent was in a Montana. We had a, a near identical build, save for I went rudder. He went probably damage control duration. My rudder, uh, and for the Monty, the legendary is also contributed to this. I have the rudder ship module and the legendary. I'm basically cutting six to eight seconds off of my rudder in comparison to the opponent. And we're sailing directly at each other. And I set my rudder full one side. He sets full one side to match. He's obviously attempting to ram. And when he is loaded with his rudder at full max, since obviously he's at full max because that's the only way he could match the turn, I quickly shift my rudder over to the opposite end. So while he is still stuck trying to recover his slow rudder back down so that he can maybe try and match my rudder turn, I'm already in the opposite direction. Throwing him off, forcing a drive-by, and blapping him out of existence. That is exactly what rudder shift can do for you. It can give you advantages in situations where a little bit of maneuverability goes a long way in mitigation. And as a battleship, it really goes a long way in mitigation. It's probably the most unsung hero of a battleship is the rudder. Slight adjustments at medium to long range can be the difference between you taking a citadel and maybe it falling harmlessly in the water or bouncing off your ship. You know, we're talking about very large ships that are very easy to shoot and any more agility that you may introduce to that ship could lead towards more success. So for me, this is a question of, do I want to be someone who excels at a certain situation, like bow tanking, stationary bow tanking, or against a lot of dot targets, or do I want to be a little bit more universal and have a better ship overall in performance? And I think that the superior way to play battleships is universal soldiers, making them tanks, making them be able to deal with all the problems because they have the help to withstand it. Uh, maybe not DDs or uh, cruisers because sometimes, you know, they don't have enough, enough help to even develop a strat. You know, they have to rely on being concealed completely. Battleships don't have to do that. Battleships can be seen. Battleships should be seen. Uh, a battleship being seen and taking incoming fire means that your teammates, your squishier teammates, are not having to weather that kind of storm. And it, it is something that's just... You know, you have to dedicate yourself towards giving up your body for your team, and it may feel weird, and gosh, that guy got a nice citadel from that angle. You know, it might feel weird for players to be tanks, to do that for your team, but I definitely notice that my team's win rate goes way up when I commit to playing battleships this way, and the rudder shift contributes to it making it more comfortable to play them this way. You could absolutely go a dot build and just take the incoming and keep it reduced and heal it back up. And that's great. But with the faster turret traverse ships that are being introduced into the game, especially for battleships, I mean, definitely there is a power creep on turret traverse. The faster the turret traverse, the less I have to negotiate with it and work against it. That was one of the negatives of a faster runner. You couldn't keep your guns forward and on the target. So, which would you prefer? Faster guns or faster rudder? Well, you would end up giving up your rudder for your guns. But a lot of these ships have faster and faster and faster turret travers. There's also easier access to more unique commanders with a stronger expert marksman. Having all of these ships, you know, the War Spite, the Amato, get improved turret travers helps alleviate some of that playability concern with that the rudder may have had in the original version of the game. But we're not in that version anymore. Battleships have faster turret traverse, and consequently, they can keep their guns on target easier. And having the ship's rudder work against it is not that big of a deal. And it's even less of a deal at this stage of the game. So all of this coupled together really makes me feel very confident in my selection for the rudder shift. It gives me the most universal benefit, and quite frankly, it also makes the game more enjoyable for me to control. Having your ship
go where you want it to in the least amount of time gives that responsiveness that is, you know, really rewarding feedback for actions that you do in anything. You know, I, I love my keyboard or my mouse because it's responsive. Responsiveness helps it feel like you're more in direct control. And that's exactly what it does for the battleship. So I am absolutely a believer in the rudder shift module on my battleships. It has helped me more than any other single module, and I highly recommend you guys take an honest look at your modules and see if you are one of those stationary bow tankers. You might benefit from the acceleration module. Uh, if you're someone who lets fires and floods stay forever, well, guess what? Damage control is the way to go. But for someone like me trying to develop it further and to get every ounce of the ship, I've really noticed a larger impact from my rudder and the responsiveness of it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World War videos, first impression, how-to, news, or review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.